video is sponsored by Pets Ad Life, POW, a national nonprofit that promotes responsible pet ownership as well as the enhancing value that pets add to our lives. Stay tuned because after I talk about Lady and the Tramp, I'm going to show you all of my pets and that includes Corkies. So a funny thing happened while watching Lady and the Tramp. I came up with a theory. And no, it's not about Darlene's real first name because Darlene actually is her first name. Actually, let me pause getting to the main theory for a second so that I can support this idea. If you listen in the baby shower scene, multiple women address her as Darlene and not like, oh, Darlene, you look great. But I was just saying that Darlene looks radiant. Obviously, friends and acquaintances wouldn't call someone by the name of Darlene, especially not if it's a pet name from her husband. But to make it more interesting, it's also not unheard of for a child to be named after the mother's maiden name. For example, Cotton Mather from the famous Salem Witch Trials was born to Increase Mather and Maria Cotton. I believe that Darlene was named in a similar fashion and that her mother's maiden name was Darlene, relating her somehow to Wendy Darlene and her family. If Darlene's mother immigrated to the United States in the late 1800s and the rest of her clan stayed in England, that would cover all the bases. That would also explain why Darlene looks just like an older version of Wendy, because Darlene is Wendy's great aunt or third cousin or something like that. Well, now that that's been explained, it hey, I connected two Disney movies. It occurred to me that the infamous Tramp has a much sadder backstory than we realize. Let me pause again here and say that this theory will not bother with Lady and the Tramp 2 Scamp's adventure, I think, because the entire thing with the junkyard dogs and Tramp being this type of gang member completely contradicts the original film and Tramp's loner lifestyle. As I've said in other videos, if the sequel isn't on par with the original story and it feels rushed and forced together, I'm not going to consider it canon. Anyways, back to the original version of the Tramp. I found his attitude towards babies very odd. He makes that strange voice mocking an adult woman and he says, put that dog out, he'll get fleas all over the baby. Stop that racket, you'll wake the baby. Then he describes the changes that occur in a dog's diet and living conditions once a couple starts having children. I don't think this is random pessimism. I think this is what happened to the Tramp himself. Think about it. It, the Tramp has a family for every night of the week, and he is adored by Tony and Joe at the Italian restaurant, so why wouldn't he want to just stay in one place and have a normal owner like every other dog seems to desire in this movie? It's because he's been burnt before. After analyzing the Tramp's behavior, here's the scenario that I think works best. I think Tramp was a mixed dog that belonged to a poor family. I say this for one because Tramp seems a little surprised when he walks into Lady's part of town as if he's never seen a neighborhood that looks like that before. And for two, all of the families in nicer houses have purebred dogs. Lady is a Cocker Spaniel, Trusty is a Bloodhound, and Jock is a Scottish Terrier. Plus, Jock gets annoyed at the Tramp and demands to be called Heather Lad of Glencairn. If you don't know, registered dogs often have really odd names on their paperwork. In this case, Heather would be the name of the kennel or breeder that produced Jock, and having of Glen Cairn in his name implies that he was purchased as a show dog or a stud dog by another kennel. So when you get a fancy dog with lots of paperwork, their name is kennel's name, dog's name, then of the new owner's kennel. But no one usually calls their dog by that giant mouthful, so his owners just call him Jock. That means when Jock tells Tramp to refer to him as Heather Lad of Glencarn, that would be like someone named Steve saying, that's Mr. Steven Pettigrew to you. I know, I know. Insider dog jokes are almost as cheesy as dad jokes. Back on topic, if Tramp belonged to a poor family, having a baby would have been a huge financial struggle for them. Remember, Lady and the Tramp takes place in New England during the early 1900s, and welfare didn't exist until 1935. So if you had a baby, there was no safety net to get food or other help. You just had to find a way to make it work. That meant luxury things like pets became a problem because if you can't feed your baby, you can't feed your dog. So when the tramp had a new baby enter his family, 
He had a few sad weeks as a lonely, starving outside dog, and then the family probably ditched him by the train tracks while he was still a puppy, which is where Tramp continued to sleep every night from there on out. Of course, dogs are sweet, loyal animals and they don't understand that they've been left behind. Tramp had to start begging for table scraps to survive and he never joined another family because for a long time he held on to the hope that his owners would return for him. When Tramp realized they weren't returning, he decided that he would live by his own rules and never let another human own him again. This idea holds up at the end of the movie, where Lady and Tramp are living together with their puppies. The Tramp didn't move in for the humans. He moved in to be near Lady, another dog. Tramp is there on his terms. He is not there to be a family pet again. Okay, this theory has me a little bummed out. It's great that we know that the Tramp got his happily ever after, but I'm gonna go hug my dogs now. You guys are totally invited to keep watching and see them too. Please, please, please check out Pets Ed Life on YouTube for tons of great pet related videos. This is Rigby, or Riggity Jiggity Boo, or on his paperwork, he is known as Doctor Who becomes the dog tour Rigby. He is a red-headed tricolor Pembroke Welsh Corgi. Here's Moxie, a red and white Pembroke Welsh Corgi, officially named That Girl's Got Moxie. These guys like to run and they like to herd. Since we don't have sheep, these corgis like to herd the kids instead, and they are such sweet little floof butts. But they are stubborn too. If you don't train them and keep them in line, corgis will turn around and train you. Next we have Smoky Bones that kind of looks like a Russian blue, but he's from a litter of strays that someone was giving away. And Finn, aka Finnikin, aka Phineas, aka a million other weird little nicknames that start with Finn. He is what they call an apple-headed flame point Siamese, but fun fact, that's just a fancy term for a stray that has red Siamese-like markings. These are not purebred registered Siamese cats. There is no such thing as a red or flame point Siamese. And Finny here came from a rescue and he is such a big lover, baby. Mwah. He's my cuddle bug. My daughter just got her very first rabbit, Bon Bon. We have no idea what breed it might be. She was in a farm supply store looking so cute that we had to take her home with us. But she is the softest thing you could imagine and so quiet and calm, you could forget that she's even there. Now to the big finale. This is Mr. Hen's butt. She's broody right now, so she won't cooperate at all. So I'm just gonna put up some videos and older photos that look a lot nicer than this side of her booty. She is a black-tailed white Japanese bantam. She was part of a flock that a fox got into and slaughtered, but because Mr. Hen could climb, she survived and has ran the yard ever since, really. Everyone always wants the details as to why she's called Mr. Hen. Well, that's because we bought her straight run, which in the chicken world, that means males and females mixed together. And it's very hard to sex a chick. There are over a dozen methods and none of them are 100% accurate. So when Mr. Hen got bigger, there was endless loud crow and we thought we surely had a rooster. Then one day we found a bunch of eggs hidden in the mud and all that crowing was just her super obnoxious egg song. Chickens make really good pets though if you get the right breed. Plus they eat tons of bugs and they lay really good eggs. They're so much better than what you can get in the store. And when we had a larger flock, I literally watched my chickens shred a snake. So you don't see that every day. And those are my pets. Let's see yours. Check out Pets Ed Life on YouTube and then come back here and show me your pets. Well, that's all I have for now, but this video's not quite over yet. We're expanding, so I have to plug our other channels. Total, we have The Fangirl, dealing primarily with movies and shows, Say Halo Goodbye Gaming, and The Family Family Vlogs. Links are in the description, and we would love to see you at all three channels. Okay, I think that's it. So thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed enough to like, subscribe, and share this video. We have tons of material across our various channels that you are fully encouraged to go check out. And if somehow you can't get enough of me, please connect with me on Instagram at Say Halo Goodbye or Twitter at the underscore family.